So, just a recap of uh, what we were discussing yesterday. We were discussing about uh, the document types and how they map in EWM from and um, basically we were discussing about you know the important um, elements of uh, the deliveries that we can see in EWM and today we are going to see how they are determined so we just saw you know what are the important element uh, delivery type in ECC and a document type, item type, item category and uh, delivery category, document category all these are important uh, elements on the delivery side in EWM we also saw you know what are the uh, different uh, uh, fields in the header item data okay so today we'll uh, go ahead and just try to understand uh, how this different uh, document type and item type are determined as I said yesterday the uh, delivery uh, sorry the document category and item category are standard in SAP okay and we cannot create them and uh, only if we want to integrate to a customized bespoke uh, document delivery type of ECC we have to create a document type similarly we have to integrate a bespoke item category of ECC then we have to create an item type okay so we saw the places where we are going to create we saw the menus and the different uh, uh, different uh, in the menus in the configuration node we saw the different different profiles which we can maintain and what each what each profile does we just reviewed that also we you know uh, understood you know that in the profile there are two kinds of profile one is system profile one is custom profile customer profile so we create a custom profile assign a internet assign it to a system profile and accordingly we can make the configurations that are allowed okay so I'll just log in and I'll take you to the data so uh, we go to this eleven node now. Uh, this is in the EWM side. Basically, there are two configuration. I'm just taking you through inbound first. Okay. So, map document type from ERP system to EWM. So, if you recollect, you know, yesterday we saw a document type of EF. Okay. So, you can see document type of EL. Here, it is assigned to a document type. I and B EDWM. Okay. So what we can do is using a business system, let's say you know for which customer it is, we can influence you know which document type it is determined. Okay, so let's say in standard it is EL is I and B. If I create Z I and B, what I can do is I can copy this. I can maintain my own business system and say that instead of I and B, just give me Z I and B. Okay. 
then you can see one more field which is called as code initiator. Okay, code initiator is you know for the same delivery you know if it is coming for transportation cross docking. Okay, if it is coming from uh, for any kit kitting purpose, it is for coming for good receipt. Okay, um, so. If it is coming from a production order, let's say I will show you one very typical example of a purchase order. Okay, so VIG. So if it is coming for you know if the same delivery is coming for let's say DIG is coming for um, good receipt, then I and BI will be coming. Okay, good receipt for production. If it is I think discrete, then IDIS will be the document type. So these are your standard for all the standard delivery type of VCC. You know, the relevant document type is integrated is provided here. Okay, so let's say GRP is good receipt from production. Okay, and posting change difference. If there is any posting change difference, then you know you do some posting change and it has to be communicated to EWM. Then you know, this is the document type which will be taken to create a delivery. Okay. So this is the important table, and you know, mostly you will see this code initiator for your different different process. So see if you can use any of this code initiator. You know, I um, mean, well, the common one is GRN, good to see notification, GRP. Okay. So. This is how we map delivery type from ECC. Same way, you know, we map, you know, the item category from ECC. So you can see business system, document category. So currently we are using the business system document category EL for inbound delivery. Item category we saw was ELN. So IDLV was the document type. Okay. So now if you have a, you know, different document type. In EWM, if let's say we have a Z document type, Z, I, and B, so we can ask, you know, this, if we have Z, we will not maintain an entry here, we, the IDLV will be taken, but if we want the ZDLV to be coming as an item type in inbound delivery, so we enter here as a document type of EWM, which is Z, and, you know, determine IDLV. So if it is a catch weight product, then you know, this again you can take here. So, you know, if you want to uh, have, you know, basically there are uh, basically, sorry, uh, basically, you know, posting changes happening in two steps. The posting changes in one step and you know, posting change is like, you know, changing, let's say, for stock type or, you know, doing a stock transfer from one store location to another. It can be two steps, right? So we can determine a different item type for the first step and different item type for the second step. So posting change, let's say you change from one store location to another. So there are two deliveries created, you know, for moving the stock from your, moving the stock from your, um, stock to understood and uh, sorry from uh, uh, let's say there are two store location you want to move the stock from one store location to another using a two step okay that's a stock transfer with two step so first step will be you take the stock from the first store location put it in stock in transit and then from stock in transit you send it to the receiving store location so there are two steps happening the system creates two deliveries now for those two deliveries if you want to determine separate item type then you can select, you know, either A for the first, B for the second, you know, same way, you know, if it is uh, just one step, you can assign one, and if it, there are two steps, you want to assign two. So it depends on your, you know, uh, posting change, how you want to carry out, okay. So these are the, you know, influencing factors based on which your item type will be determined in the EWM, okay. So, so one more point here, your item type will be determined and if 
view item type or delivery type will be determined and if you want to change it let's say your item type and delivery type will be determined for your notification using this config okay item type and document type sorry and then you know, there is one more configuration related to document type determination which we can see here so what it does is you know what it takes is it checks like what is the uh, document category if it is IDR that means inbound delivery notification okay. Okay, so what uh, you can see here, you know, system, you know, you what we can do is if you want, if IDR, INV is determined from the config just we just saw, and if you want the next delivery, inborn delivery, which is coming up, okay, to have a different document type. So here it is IDR, INV, but we want a ZINB for inborn delivery, okay. Let's say that is a requirement. So you can do it here. You can see if the prerequisite document is IDR and document type is INB, the next document which is PDI. Okay, this is PDI. Okay. It's also INB coming from this config, so you can make it C I N B. So for the first one is, you know, let's say if you do not have a prerequisite document, nothing coming from ECC, so you can determine it directly from this config, okay? So the config that I just show, so, uh, showed you before this was to link your delivery type to your document type. This config is to change the document type within the process, yeah, you know, within the inbound or outbound process, you want to change it for some reason so you can you know use this config okay so this is how you know your delivery type and item types are determined so same way you know you'll have for item type same way you will have settings for your uh, outbound as well yeah so you can see your this is your item this is your document category this is your document type so you know item type generally you know takes your uh, uh, document category document type as well yeah document category and document type so uh, document category let it be anything document uh, item category of ECC so this is the you know item type so there are few more influencing factors let's say hierarchy so like it's a what kind of product it is whether it's a batch product or a fitting product okay so based on that you can you know if it is a batch we generally ma make a different item type for batch so that you know the batch information are recorded in the item type okay this is the item type of your you know this is the item type of your preceding document Okay, so if you are doing for inbound delivery, this is for inbound delivery notification. What is the item type? What is the item category of ECC? Oh, sorry, this is the item type for the producer document. And this is this is for the producer document and then this item type for high level item. Okay. So generally you know this is for the item type of the high level item. What is high level item I'll explain you. If you have a delivery, you know, uh, let's say this is a delivery and in this we have an item. So what we can do is we can also bring in, you know, um, subsequent item. So let's say for fitting, you know, we have a kit here and it has subsequent items within that. Okay, like, like a bomb bill of material. Okay. 
Okay. So this is high level item and there will be subsequent items in this. So if you define saying that high level item, the item type is this, the subsequent item should have this item type. So then you use this field there. Okay. So I mean depending on your client's requirement and your delivery mapping, you might come across these configurations. I just want to make you aware that uh, these are the necessary places where we will be working with. Okay. So now let us do a, so these are the you know configuration nodes we just visited. So let's, let us just uh, now, okay, uh, I'm just going to review the org structure that we mapped and then I'll be taking you through the EWM um, structure elements. So any questions on the delivery uh, mapping and delivery integration? Okay. Um, if no questions, we we'll proceed for the next topic, which is the off structure. So the screen that you see now is uh, ERP org structure, typical ERP org structure, which, where, which you see, you know, in most of the companies or in your in your companies you might be using it or for uh, demo purpose you might be practicing this org structure a lot on the ECC side. Okay, so I'm just going to explain you what uh, mapping you have to do uh, to extend it to a warehouse or what kind of um, uh, whereas assignment you can do, you know, when it um, comes to EWM, anything changes on the ECC side. Okay, so we have company code. We all know company code has plants. Plant are uniquely assigned to company code, so uh, each plant will have just one company code assignment. Plant will have storage location.
Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, sorry, I just lost my connection for a bit. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so let's go back to our org structure. So I was speaking about the ERP org structure, you know, uh, you all might be knowing these things. So under store location, we all are clear. We have seen it in ECC. I'll explain you, you know, what possible combinations we can have with warehouse. So what we have done now is for one company code we have created one plant. In one plant we have created, you know, three store locations and we have assigned warehouse to two store locations. If you recollect our off structure configuration that we did, our company code is 1000, plant is 8000, okay, store location are 1000, 2000, 3000. Store location 1000 and 2000 we have assigned to the same warehouse and store location 3000, you know, we haven't assigned it to any warehouse. Okay, that's what we have done. So what other possible combinations we could have is, uh, one thing we have noticed is plant and store location combination we are assigning to a warehouse. Okay, that's clear. Then that same warehouse can be assigned to two storage locations. Correct? That we have also seen. Okay, like uh, our warehouse WH8, we have assigned the store location 1000 and 2000 as well. Okay. This warehouse is ECC warehouse. During our integration setting, we have seen that we have to create warehouse in ECC also, EWM also. And then we ECC warehouse is three character field, EWM warehouse is four character field, then we integrate or map both those warehouses. Okay? So this warehouse of ECC, you know, can be assigned to just one store location or many store location depending on your need, how they are you know, how you want to um, assign them. Then your warehouse of um, your warehouse, you can also assign to plant and store location combination of different plants, okay? So let's say your warehouse is not necessarily required to be for the same plant store location combination. Let's say this warehouse uh, 002 is assigned to a plant PLO1, store location is LO2, same warehouse can be assigned to another plant of uh, same company code or another plant of another company code as well. So that's also fine. So here in this example you can see warehouse 003 is assigned to plant PLO2 store location as LO2 and it's assigned to uh, plant PLO3 which is another company code and as LO3. Okay. So warehouse does not, you know, considers your, uh, you know, company code assignments. Okay. As we know, warehouse is, does not have any integration with finance. So it has nothing to do with which company code it is belonging to, your plant store location combination. It just looks at your plant store location combination. There is just one control in terms of warehouses that one plant store location combination can be only assigned to one warehouse. You cannot assign PLO1, SLO1 to S002 as well. Okay, that, that is pretty clear. Even the configuration node will not allow you that. Okay, so this is how a typical possible combinations of your warehouse creations that you can do. Okay, then the next is what we saw is we created a warehouse in, in EWM and what was, what was a four character field and we just assigned it to the warehouse of ECC. Okay. So we have, you know, what we are, what I'm trying to demonstrate, you know, by creating two store locations assigned to the same warehouse is this process, which is, you know, which we may see in a concept called availability group. Okay. So you have two store locations. In our case, thousand and two thousand. So what this basically thousand, two thousand, uh, you know, just to, you know, as part of their purpose, why they are created. You know, they may be called as ROD and AFS store location. Okay, so ROD means receiving on dock. That means anything you receive from your customers, you know, you'll be receiving it in ROD. Anything you supply to your customer, you will be supplying from AFS available for sale. Okay, that 
you know that definition you can keep in mind receiving on dock you receive here okay and then sending you send from you shipping you ship from here okay so why there are two store location combination used generally in EWM I will explain you in availability group okay so what is the issue and why you know system for any process in this two store location that we will be covering in availability group okay so two store location just remember the name one is uh, one is kind of representing receiving on the off store location other available for sale So next set of configurations we have already done plant, plant to company go, store location, warehouse, you know, so I'll just quickly run through the slides, assigning plant, assigning warehouse to plant store location combination, that also we have done, assigning warehouse of ECC to EWM warehouse, warehouse specific config where we say it is a EWM warehouse, delivery split configuration also we have done. EWM side we have assigned the warehouse of ERP to EWM. Uh, the configuration where we you know maintain supply chain unit, custody and party internal to dis dispose. Okay. So all those things we have already covered. Then okay, yeah. So uh, until this point we have covered. Now I want to uh, take you through the EWM of structure. Okay. So this is a warehouse, okay? A warehouse, a typical warehouse, where you can imagine a warehouse has different storage type. The storage types has have different sections, and sections have bins. So people who have already worked on WM might be well known to these, you know, structural elements. So, so the people who are new to WM or warehousing, I'll just explain you. You can imagine warehouse is a kind of a building that you have, okay, a building or a you know large space where you are going to store your products, okay. That building is divided into individual rooms, so you can imagine one room is one storage type, okay. So room or compartment which, into which your uh, warehouse is divided, it's a room, let's say for example, or in one big hall or big room, you know, you might have different different areas. So those are storage types. Within that storage type, you divide it into two. You know, if division is optional, if you want to divide the storage type, you can divide it into storage sections. Okay. If not, then keep it as it is. One storage section, one storage type. That is also fine. And then in that storage section, you create bins. So warehouse management is nothing but you know storing your stock in a bin. So you can if warehouse management was not there, you could store the stock only at store location level. So you know, we could only see the stock is it at this store location, ROD, EFS, but we don't know where exactly the stock is and which bin it is lying. Okay. So the feature of any warehouse management system is it tells you, you know, in which bin. So you can imagine, let's say you have a huge space, IT system will tell you where exactly your uh, product is lying, which shelf, which bin, which, you know, uh, section, every every minute details, every event. In some cases, you can also identify the coordinates where this uh, uh, bin is, okay? So, just, uh, I have a small video, you know, just to show you, you know, just to further elaborate, you know, how a typical warehouse is. So, Maybe you know if we go through this, it will just briefly give us a you know a very uh, typical understanding of our most common warehouse. Just a small video to explain you you know how a warehouse looks like. So this is let's say for example a warehouse. So warehouse will have you know, at the start, gates like this. Okay, so these gates are where your truck and will have come 
and the park here. The back side facing the warehouse, so you can remove the stock from their back and put it into the warehouse. Okay. So this is very small warehouse. You can imagine, you know, in multiples of this, you know, uh, warehouse can be. So this is handling equipments. You know, we call them resources. So these forklifts, they move around, they take the product and they place it here and there. This is a typical storage facility. We call it as uh, racking. Okay, so you you can rack, you can place this. You know, see these these are pallets. You know, these are pallets, or you know, on this your product will be stored. Okay, so let's say this is a wooden plank. It looks like a wooden plank. So you they go pick the material on this wooden plank and keep this wooden plank on this shell okay so you know each of the shell you know will be given a barcode okay so there will be a barcode here to identify the bin a barcode for the pallet as well so you can see you know uh, you will have cranes also for handling you know a lot of stuff So, you know, a, a warehouse, you know, if you see specifically see, you know, companies which are only into warehousing, they will have huge space. You can just see all together till the end, you know, a lot of racking. This is, you know, three height. So sometimes it goes even more than that, you know, five height. And, you know, it's too deep. So it can be, you know, even more deep. So you can see, you know, these are your pallets or these are your handling units, you know. These are empty, or you can you can imagine there could be a stock placed on this. So you know, generally when the product comes from from vendors, you know they are stored in this intermediate space, okay, and then they are you know uh, stored into the actual racking. Okay. So uh, EWM, you know, we will be creating this intermediate storage. I mean WM also. So this forklift, we are going to create resources to see, you know, which forklift is now handling stock, picking from here, putting it away, okay? And uh, even we can create a, uh, a resource for, you know, the crane, you know? So generally, you know, you also have a docking station for your forklifts or for your dollies, you know, if they are Man, they are uh, operated electrically for them to be charged. Okay, so that is also there in some warehouses. So this is you can imagine a very small warehouse. You know, um, the warehouses which we are going to discuss are going to be you know uh, a very complicated one. So this these are some areas of storage. We can, you know, you can imagine these areas will be not many. So, minimum, you know, uh, eight to ten storage types we are going to create okay, for our items. So this is the office, you know, where the warehouse supervisors they sit and they monitor. So I think the rest is okay. Should be fine. So here you can see a good delivery area. So that was an intermediate storage which we I showed you, you know, that anything comes from the vendor that gets stored there and then they get stored in the racking. Then from racking they are picked and they are kept here. And from here they are loaded onto the truck or trailer. So these are the doors again, you know. So you can have same doors or different doors for inbound and outbound. Okay, so generally we have different doors. These are called as doors. So these are, you know, outbound doors in from, you know, where you take the stock and, you know, load it onto a truck or trailer. Because, you know, generally your flow is so much in warehouses, you know, you can't afford for the same area. You can, you can say that some trucks are waiting for loading, some trucks are, you know, waiting for unloading. So you kind of mess up, 
you know with uh, so many things so ideally you know uh, it's recommended that you have different doors so you know uh, as part of SAP you know we are not uh, we are just asked to map a warehouse in the system but designing of the whole warehouse you know how many doors it should have what kind of rackings it have it has you know it, there is a separate field which is called as warehouse designing they design all those things you know how many racking what is the weight capacity of the racking so it's all you know kind of uh, already done so when you enter in a you know, warehouse then you know you already these things will be set up you just have to look at how things are and map them in your system okay so you can you know see this uh, parts can be picked and you know they can be packed into you know into containers as well yeah. container size so this, this you can imagine a big container which is kept ready for your customer and that container will be loaded onto a truck or you know trailer so I will be sharing some more videos to with you, you know, for some more complex way of this. Just, or you can also, if you find them, go and, you know, Google it, you know, you'll find, or YouTube, you'll find a lot of videos, you know, how warehouse operations are performed. You can, a very typical case study, you can see of how Amazon warehouses are handled. You can see the equipments used, you can see the, you know, movements, so fast it is. So, it's really, really, you know, um, you know with the e-commerce coming and gaining momentum nowadays the warehousing has to be really really you know mapped very well there is there are no room for error okay plus every movement has to be tracked okay so coming back to you know uh, our warehouse so we will now uh, probably we'll uh, create just one storage type and going forward we will try to create some more storage types so I showed you uh, the one the racking arrangement one rack can be one storage type one bin also can become one storage type but ideally you know it's the whole area here yeah, let's just imagine this was the whole racking area we, we create them as one storage type okay. So, uh, I will just show you the configuration where we create storage type. Okay. The storage type which we have in WM also we have storage type, but the storage type here is different to the WM storage type. You know, you have, we have different, I mean, those who have already used WM can compare the screen with WM, the fields uh, is slightly different here. So we have created warehouse E M K T. Sorry. What was the W H A T? So once we have copied, you know, these are the standard warehouses which you know have come up. So you can see, you know, there are so many warehouses, uh, so many storage types. So these are all standard. I'll just delete, you know some of the storage type which are you know, created by some other warehouse and since we have copied unit has come over to us these are not standard ones so standard ones I'll keep them okay Thing and we have to delete first to this section. Anyways, I'll try to delete it later. Okay. So, you know, these are the standard ones you know, which are copied, I think, up till um, 9040, you know, starting from 0010. So, this SAP has already created they have their standard strategies and configurations in place we just have to you know um, copy them and then use them so 
you know, uh, you can create your own storage type. Okay. So ideally, you know, if uh, you're creating your warehouse, you're doing it, uh, doing an implementation for your warehouse, you don't have to, you know, necessarily use the standard ones. I mean, it's very unlikely that the same configuration of standard will help you to, you know, achieve what you're looking for for your customer. So 99% of your time, you'll have to copy the standard into your company specific storage type. Let's say for example, you know, our company, uh, our warehouse, you know, we have a, a, you know, different storage type. Okay. So that storage type, uh, in a, for our company, you know, we want to give a different name. Okay. So let's say for example, I copy the storage types. Okay, let me complete some of the ones which we will be demonstrating. So, yeah. So let me copy this. So, what I'm doing is hierarchy storage. To understand hierarchy storage, we will do some exercises. You know, so I want to give a name. You know, uh, for our storage. So definitely, you know, when we go for. Uh, implementations we ask customer you know what is the nomenclature you want to follow okay so not necessarily it has to start with Z you can give your own name so we can create you know five or six storage types here so let's say we create a storage type um, in, and in you know uh, in sequence of our you know plan name let's say 8001 let me just copy then I'll just quickly run you through the important fields here 0 0 2 2 0 0 0 0 Okay, so I've created this six storage types here. So, for you, uh, at this point of time, you know, just uh, there are many, many indicators here. Okay, so let me go to our PPT. So, what are the typical, you know, storage areas? You know, we have just copied them. Okay, so the main, main, main point that you know we all uh, will have to decide when we are creating a storage type is this what is the role going to be okay so this uh, storage type role was not there in WM it has newly <coughs> new field in EWM so whatever storage type I have copied a standard storage type where we are going to store the stock <coughs> so basically you know uh, the doors that we just saw are also going to be a storage thing. So there is the yard where all the truck and trailers are going to be parked. That is also going to be a storage type. Products in supply, where, a, where you store your product before supplying to your plant is also going to be an intermediate storage. Okay. Work center, where you know a storage type will be creating the role work center. If uh, you take it to a place where you're going to pack it, you're going to uh, label it, you're going to do all sort of things on a product, inspect it, so it will be a work center. Staging area, you know, where you st store it for some time and then you do, you know, loading, unloading, okay, and uh, from unloading where do you keep it, that's a staging area. Pick point, identification point, it's a uh, intermediate storage before you put the stock in a bin or you remove the stock from a bin. So for the purpose of you know packing and packing or labeling or any such requirement. Okay. So these are the different roles. We will go ahead and you know understand each of these roles. As of now, you know if you recollect uh, you know these ones I have created as standard, but if you recollect I created a bin GR zone, uh, intermediate storage bin, you know, when I was about to, you know, uh, carry out some uh, transactions related to uh, inbound. So you, you know, like 9020 is a 
it's a good issue. I created in 9010. So that was a staging area. You know, it was an intermediate area in the warehouse. You know, video that I showed you, there was an intermediate area from where the stock concrete gets stored is in the intermediate area and then it goes into the racking. So that intermediate area is called a staging area. So you can see in the system that 9010 is a staging area for good receipt. So it has a role of staging area. Okay. We saw a staging area for good issue also in system, in standard system that is 9020. And we, we create a good, you know, every storage type will have bin. So that day I created a bin in this storage type. Okay. So 9020 is the storage type. Then uh, we got the storage type. Then, uh, you know, there are many more. So which we'll be going ahead and discussing, let's say, for uh, quality, you know, there's the role given to the storage type as work center. So basically, you know, a warehouse in EWM, it, it does not exclude any any area in your warehousing complex. Any Anywhere that you are going to store your stock or a product is going to move from there or even for few minutes it, it is going to be stored there, it will be recognized by a particular bin or a particular area in the system. Okay, so you have to analyze, you know, the entire layout. So when you go for implementation, the first thing they will be handing it over to you is your warehouse layout. And they will ask you, okay, this is how our product, I need to understand the movements and then design your system accordingly. Okay. So we understood storage type, important field is your role. Okay. Then there are few more important fields apart from that, like what are going to be strategies, you know. So this will understand in inbound and outbound, what are the strategies, okay. So put for all your put away relevant settings are done here, all your reward relevant settings are done here, how your uh, stock is controlled done here, replenishment is done here. Then here you can see how your handling unit requirements are handled whether you have handling units, you know, where you don't have handling units or it is optional. So, you know, like like in ECC, WM, this is a major concern from handling handling units, you know, in a storage type level, it's not there. So here it is possible to make it optional, mandatory, you know, not required. Okay. Then, you know, just if you get time, just go through these fields. Just try to you know digest. Don't uh, worry; we'll be understanding this most of these fields through our uh, examples. Very important config, you know, in EWM or in WM as well. So just go through this field, understand, right? You know, correlate if you have seen WM, and uh, you know, just try to read some of these things and. If uh, F1 read some of the things, if you get time. Okay. So we created a storage type. We created five storage type. Okay. Then the next config is to create storage section. So yeah, in this storage type, the six storage type that we have created, we'll have to create storage sections. So as I said, you know, creating storage section is optional. So what we'll do is, you know, if you want to divide the same storage type into, you know, several sections. So, H80. So what I'm doing here is I'm just for our warehouse for the storage type that we created. Um, I think I'll update my sheet as well, you know, for the storage type for you to refer you know, that we have created this. So coming to storage type.
So what I'm going to do is now creating sections in this storage type. So what the sections will do is um, you know it will divide your storage type. So for your room, if you want to divide it into different different sections, let's say one section for fast moving, one section for slow moving, one section for ground level bins, one section for you know high level bins. Okay. So you can divide it or if you don't want to divide it, just keep it one section, you know. So uh, depending on your requirement, you know, if there is any requirement to divide it to, you know, uh, separate your bins uh, within a storage time into different groups, two or three different groups, then you divide it. If not, just create one section for all. So we are just creating one section. Just created one section and then and for the same storage type I have just created section zero 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 one. Okay, I'll just change it later. The data type or the number type to show zero zero one. Okay. So just in in terms of uh, storage section, it is <coughs> division of a storage type. You know, for uh, you know, there are typical examples given here. For slow moving, fast moving, as I said, that is the most common one. Okay. Or you can say a large parts. <coughs> you have large part bins. You have uh, standard size bins okay. so for large bulk parts you want to give, store them into different storage bins we we'll create a separate section for that okay. so so this is very pretty straightforward so the section does not have much con configurations assigned to it just the one which you saw mostly it is used during good receipt you know, we have a storage section determination. The system will automatically determine which section your store goes into. Okay. Then, next is the most important uh, master data. Is I mean, this is this you can see in your structural element, but we call it as a master data because this is you know a storage type and storage section that we just created are created in configuration, but storage bins are not created in configuration, they are created as master data. Okay. So it's a master data. So it represents the physical location or storage space where the products are stored. So you just saw that tracking system, you know, each pallet where they were stored, it was one bin. You know, there will be an identification for that bin, there will be a barcode. So you place the metal in that bin. So this storage bin is assigned we created in a storage type and we say this storage type this section this is that particular bin so whenever we create a bin we have to do a storage type and section uh, point to note here is EWM bin length are 18 characters whereas in WM those were 10 characters then another point to note here is storage bins in EWM are unique okay so you create a storage bin X in storage type A Okay, or let's say in storage type 8001, we create a bin named as X. We cannot create another bin in any other storage type. Okay, so bins are unique. You can have just one bin with one name for your warehouse. Okay, it's unique for your warehouse, not in the system. So for your warehouse, you can have just one bin. Okay, so with one name. Uh, in WM, it was unique at a storage type level. So 
we could create x in 8001, we could create x in 8002, so it was unique at storage time level, but in EWM that is different, it is unique at a warehouse level, okay. So this is how a typical bin looks like, we will create a lot of bins tomorrow, you know, we, yeah, this is manually created, you know, we also have created manually, where you can see, you know, if you get time, just go into this transaction, see bin, storage type, we'll have bin type, you know, storage section, what are the weight, volume, you can have coordinates, I stack level, you know, and many more things for your storage bin, so we will be also creating storage bins in the storage type that we have created. So, bins are created using, one single bin can be created using LSO1 transaction. There can be, we can create multiple bins using structures. So, you know, we you just create a structure and in the background you create bins. So, it will create hundreds and thousands of bins depending on the structure. So, we give a template, you know, create from 111 to 10, 10, 10, with the increment of 1, 1. So, it creates, you know, hundreds and thousands of bins, you know, based on our template. Okay. So, next is again master data relevant to bin. So, we'll stop here today. Tomorrow, we'll create manually as well as, as using templates. We'll create a lot of bins for our storage types. Okay. This is just to, you know, get the data ready for our uh, subsequent scenarios that we are going to cover. Uh, inbound, outbound and all other scenarios, internal scenarios that we are going to cover in subsequent sessions. Okay. So, I will stop here today. Any questions on whatever we have discussed today? Uh, this is Shilpa here, Roman. I have a quick question. Uh, yes, so, storage bins in a big company, who creates it? Is it like a, do they have a master data person for EWM or is it like a supervisor uh, you know, in a warehouse? Um, you know, uh, it's generally the warehouse supervisor or the warehouse uh, lead, you know, who creates the bin because, you know, the master data team, you know, they sit in isolation, you know, they don't know what's there physically in the warehouse and, you know, it, it's a master data, it does not have influence on any of the module, it's related to only Dublin or AWM. So, you know, the supervisor creates and, you know, there are also, you know, controls required, you know, um, I mean at the end of the year, the supervisor is responsible to see that the right number of bins are created. You know, without control, if you keep on creating bins, you will have a lot of virtual bins, right? So, you will face issue in your physical inventory and all those, you know. So, bins have to be created, there is a person who is responsible to make sure that, you know, uh, the not but but two not too many virtual bins are created and each bin is created assigned a barcode okay and it's uh, it's it's actually there physically available okay thank you uh, I have another question here I'm sorry so about mm -hmm. the storage tie uh, interim storage location is it like mm -hmm. a standard do we use a standard one or do we have to create a custom? Um, I think we will use the standard ones. Even in your uh, warehouse where you go and do implementation, or you will see most of the time we use standard. Only when, you know, something, you know, like we create a GR zone or a good issue zone, we will use standard and from there we will put it into 8001. So, mm, there are, you know, uh, some settings based on which you can change the standard to a new interim storage type. So that configuration also we will see. But generally, you know, if uh, as we change, the, you know, we will definitely not use the standard storage type. You know, we copied them into 8000 series. So, but for interim, we interim work centers, we can use the standard ones because there we will not change much settings. But yes, that does not stop you. You can create your own interim storage type as well, and we can change the determination also. Okay, thank you.
Any other question? Okay. So, shall we end the session for today? If no further questions, we will catch up again tomorrow where we will continue with in bin and activity area is what we will be focusing tomorrow and some more structural elements. Okay. okay. All right. So, we will end the session today. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.